Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about different types of error and statistical power of hypothesis tests. Okay, so in the past couple of videos we talked about, we introduced the idea of hypothesis testing and we based this idea of hypothesis testing um, on the idea of a null hypothesis and then examining in our sample uh, the likelihood of observing the test statistic uh, in our sample under the assumption that the null hypothesis was true, right? And then uh, given our significance level, we reject the null hypothesis if uh, uh, the sample that we have um, uh, or produce a test statistic that is very unlikely uh, to, uh, uh, to occur under the assumption that the null was true. Okay, so in this context, of course, we can do we can we can make two different types of errors. Okay, uh, and these two errors are related to either falsely rejecting the null hypothesis or falsely retaining the null hypothesis. And uh, uh, just to uh, to 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 make this uh, explicit, we can think the, uh, think about this in a two by two matrix where, on the one hand. Uh, we have the true state of the world, whether the null hypothesis is actually true in the population or whether the null hypothesis is actually false uh, in the population. Um, uh, and of course, we have our decision based on our hypothesis test, uh, based on our sample, to reject the null hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis, right? So in the off-diagonal uh, here, of course, we make correct decisions, right? If uh, the null hypothesis is actually false uh, in the population and we reject the null, everything is fine. We didn't really make a mistake. Same with uh, the null hypothesis being actually true in, um, uh, in the population and uh, we uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Again, uh, no, uh, no mistakes were made, right? But there are two different types of errors that we can make. One is under the assumption, or uh, if the null hypothesis actually is true, uh, but we reject the null hypothesis, this is what is called a type one error, or in other words, uh, in other words a false uh, negative. Um, or we can uh, uh, have the case where the null hypothesis in the population is false, but we retain the null hypothesis, we fail to reject this, uh, which is called a type two error or a false positive in, uh, in that sense, okay? Um, the key thing here is when we talk about significance levels, um, the hypothesis tests essentially, and then significance level alpha, uh, control the probability of a type one error. Uh, that, that probability of the type one error is essentially equal to the level of the test or alpha, right? Because it's the probability of observing the test statistic uh, or a, a value of the test statistic that is equal or larger than the value that we actually observe um, <clears throat> uh, under the assumption that the null hypothesis was true, right? And if that is small enough, uh, smaller than our alpha level, then, uh, of course, we reject the null hypothesis because we say it's sufficiently unlikely to observe our sample test statistic uh, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. But of course it is possible. Uh, with what probability? Of course, with the probability of this, the test statistic uh, itself, right? If, it, if our p-value is 0 0.001, we, f we reject the null. We say it's very unlikely that uh, our, uh, uh, we would have observed such a sample under the assumption that the null was true. How unlikely is it? Uh, well, that, that the probability is exactly 0 0.001, right? So if we then reject the null, uh, we have a 0 0.001 probability that we falsely rejected that null. In other words, that we made a type one error, right? So that's why the significance level alpha or the p-value essentially gives us the probability of a type 1 error. But it doesn't really tell us anything about the type 2 error, so the likelihood of falsely retaining a null hypothesis, right? Uh, alpha level or significance do not control the probability of a type 2 error. Um, of course, essentially there is a trade-off between uh, these two uh, types of errors between the type 1 error and the type 2 error and depending on our uh, you know substantive question we might be more concerned um, or uh, relative risk we might be more concerned with one or more concerned with the other um, but essentially when we look at hypothesis testing and significance level uh, 
what we quantify is the probability of a type one error. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in that sense, um, a large p value, so a large, um, 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 or yeah, a large p value essentially can occur for two different reasons. Either it can occur because, uh, well, the null hypothesis is true, so that's why it has been, you know, it's very likely that we observe the test statistic in our sample that we observe, or because the null hypothesis is false, but the test is not very powerful. So we have a very high likelihood of making a type two error, right? And so um, the way to kind of characterize this likelihood of a type two error of falsely retaining the null hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis, even though the null hypothesis is actually false, that's what we uh, call the statistical power of a test, right? So again, the level, oops, the significance level uh, of our test is the probability that the null is rejected when it is true. Uh, that's our type, uh, sorry, that's our type one error that we talked about. And the power of a test is the probability that the test rejects the null. Um, um, uh, yes, the probability that the, um, that the test rejects the null, assuming that the null hypothesis is actually false, right? So that's essentially the, uh, the type two error or one minus the type two error in that sense, okay? Um, so essentially what we want is, usually we assume uh, a significance level or we take you know standard significance levels like 0.05 and we want the most powerful test given our significance level. And how do we achieve a more powerful test? Oftentimes uh, that uh, involves uh, basically um, uh, collecting larger samples. Larger samples increase our power to reject false null hypotheses. Um, um, and in order to find out how large our sample has to be, how much data we have to collect um, uh, to have sufficient power, um, uh, that computation and that, uh, that, that, uh, that investigation is uh, basically the essence of power analysis, okay? Uh, so the idea behind power analysis is that um, essentially, um, or uh, yeah, the uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll get back to this in a second. The idea behind power analysis is essentially what sample size do I need in order to detect a certain departure from the null hypothesis, right? Um, so in many cases, the null hypothesis is essentially not really interesting, right? A, a certain parameter being equal to zero that's not actually a, a particularly interesting uh, null hypothesis, but at the same time, hypothesis testing may indicate the strength of evidence for or against our theories, right? So uh, oftentimes when we have, you know, particularly in the context of experiments uh, uh, and, and we test like treatment effects using our uh, regression, um, uh, using our regression framework, we can test whether parameters are equal uh, 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 or test against the null hypothesis of parameters being equal to zero in order to uh, provide evidence uh, for or against our theory uh, by essentially providing evidence against the null hypothesis that a certain parameter is equal to zero, okay? Uh, but again, the underlying uh, key question is what sample size we need to collect in order to have a sufficient chance of um, detecting uh, basically um, evidence uh, that the null hypothesis, enough evidence that the null hypothesis is not uh, true, okay? Um, so statistical power, as I mentioned, is one minus the probability of making a type two error. So one minus the probability of falsely retaining a null hypothesis, falsely uh, uh, failing to reject a null hypothesis, even though that null hypothesis was false, is not act is not true in the population, right? Um, in order to uh, uh, compute the power of a statistical test, uh, there are basically three steps that we have to go through. Uh, the first uh, one is that we have to suppose that um, uh, we have to 
make an assumption about the true population parameter. In this case, we call it mu uh, being equal to mu star, uh, which implies that our xn uh, um, uh, bar, that's our uh, population proportion in the context uh, uh, of the um, uh, election polling that we talked about in previous videos, follows a normal distribution given the central limit theorem uh, that is centered around the assumed true population uh, mean mu star uh, with, uh, of course, our uh, estimated uh, standard error. Okay, that's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Okay, so basically we assume that uh, the true population parameter uh, takes some value uh, mu star. Okay, then uh, we calculate the rejection probability um, uh, under the assumption that we reject uh, the uh, null hypothesis um, that mu is equal to mu zero um, if uh, our x bar or the absolute value of x bar is larger than mu zero plus the critical value times the standard error, right? So that's kind of the same logic as examining whether uh, the 95% confidence interval for the 5% uh, uh, significance uh, or uh, critical value uh, includes the... Um, includes the uh, null hypothesis value or not, includes zero or includes 0.5 uh, and so on, right? Okay, uh, so, oops. <clears throat> and then um, the next step or the last step is uh, we want to find the smallest uh, and the smallest sample size such that this rejection probability equals a, a pre-specified level, right? So in other words, we make an assumption about the underlying uh, true um, population value, mu star, right? And then based on that true mu star, we compute the rejection probability of rejecting the null hypothesis that mu is actually to equal to mu zero, right? So this could be uh, going back to uh, the Obama polling example. The null hypothesis is uh, that the um, uh, Obama approval rate is 0.5. Uh, let's assume that the true population um, approval rate is 0.45 or something like that. Based on these two um, pieces of information, we can compute the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, assuming this hypothetical true population parameter of mu star, which is, you know, as I said, 0.45, uh, as a function of the sample size. And then ultimately we can uh, uh, compute um, basically the smallest sample size uh, that um, reject, uh, rejects this null hypothesis with a sufficient um, uh, probability. Usually the cutoff size here is around 80%, right? So usually we want to achieve 80% power, which means that we have only a 20% uh, percent chance of making a type two error of falsely failing to reject the null hypothesis, even, to, even though the null hypothesis was actually false, right? So power analysis, uh, and again, this is a, a very brief kind of overview of power analysis. Um, uh, and we'll talk more about power analysis in, in subsequent uh, semesters. Uh, but the key idea is under the assumption of a given significance level, under the assumption of a, a, assuming a, a true population parameter or a true effect size, we basically compute how likely we are to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, and then based on that computation, we can, um, uh, we can uh, compute uh, sample sizes that are required in order to reject the null hypothesis uh, uh, with a sufficient sufficient power, essentially. Okay, uh, we can visualize this uh, this logic um, 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 in in different ways, and uh, uh, this is one visualization uh, that is also in the book that I just want to talk about briefly. Uh, we have two different. Um, uh, normal distributions here, uh, which represent sampling distributions essentially. One is um, the, uh, uh, the, the black uh, bell curve here is the sampling distribution under the null hypothesis, right? So that's assuming the null hypothesis was true. In this case, uh, assuming the true um, uh, Obama approval rate was 0.5. Uh, 
uh, we have a certain sampling distribution uh, and uh, we can uh, basically uh, reject um, based on this we reject uh, um, the null hypothesis if we observe uh, you know a, um, a, um, a value that is uh, outside of the for example 95 uh, percent um, uh, probability mass so outside to the left of this vertical bar uh, and to the right of this vertical bar here right so that's the rejection rate based on the null hypothesis okay um, <clears throat> under uh, 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 of course assuming a given um, a sample size the this uh, uh, um, 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 yeah uh, now, in order to compute the power of this test, we need to make an additional assumption about the true population value. Uh, and that's what is kind of represented uh, in this uh, red line. Uh, assuming, uh, in, in this case, we're assuming that the true uh, value is actually 0.47 uh, approximately, right? So assuming that the true population value is actually 0.47, we have a different sampling distribution based on that true mu star uh, and that is what is uh, kind of uh, uh, visualized on the uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, this this red bell curve okay so now we have two hypothetical sampling distributions one is based on the null hypothesis and one is based on our assumed true population parameter mu star Okay, so based on those two cases, uh, or based on those two scenarios, we can look at the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, or uh, the yeah, the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. Uh, be, that means basically being outside, um, uh, outside of this, uh, or to the left of this bar, or to the right of this bar, assuming that the true data generating process is actually characterized. By this, uh, by this uh, uh, red bell curve, right? So in other words, we're basically looking at the probability mass that is uh, here uh, uh, kind of uh, shaded as uh, uh, red under the, the red bell curve. Uh, and uh, down here, that's basically the area where we're rejecting the null hypothesis under the uh, assumed uh, true population uh, parameter uh, mu star. So assuming that the null, uh, or given that the null hypothesis is actually false, uh, this is now the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. Um, and of course, in this particular case, uh, the power is actually rather, um, um, rather low, uh, assuming this mu star, because uh, for uh, quite a large uh, kind of probability mar uh, uh, mass essentially between uh, these two um, uh, uh, vertical bars, uh, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is not true because the null hypothesis or the true population parameter here is mu star. It's actually 0.47, it's not 0.5, right? So given the sample size, and given the true kind of assumed mu star, we would still, in many cases, assuming these sampling distributions, uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis of p being equal to 0.5, even though the null hypothesis is actually false. Okay, so that's one visualization of uh, the, this kind of kind of underlying logic of power analysis. Okay, uh, another way of uh, thinking about this is to kind of think about or kind of rather than plotting this as these two different um, uh, bell curves for two different sampling distributions, we can directly kind of plot this, uh, this area or the, the combined area to the left and to the right where we reject the null hypothesis as, uh, as a probability or as the, the actual power, which is one minus, again, one minus the probability of making a type two error. Um, <clears throat> Uh, as a function, as I mentioned earlier, as a function of the sample size, okay? So uh, in other words, uh, what we're plotting here is uh, the power of a test, uh, assuming that um, uh, under different sample sizes, four different assumed mu stars, okay? So uh, for example, um, 
this specific example, the the uh, mu star, so the true population parameter was just 0.47, uh, so that's around here. And so the popul uh, the power of that test under gu under different sample sizes uh, is uh, uh, relatively low, 0.1. Uh, between 0 0.1 for 250 respondents or a sample size of 250 and around 0.25 or something like that for 1,000 um, or sample size of 1,000. If on the other hand the uh, true population uh, proportion or mu star is equal to 0.4 we see that uh, power is um, uh, larger than 80 percent uh, for uh, uh, even for the smallest sample size of 250, right? So again, the power of a statistical test is a function of the sample size uh, uh, as well as uh, of the kind of true population, uh, the assumed true population value. Uh, this is this mu star, right, uh, that, that we have to assume. Uh, and based on that, uh, we can uh, uh, basically, if we if we know we want to achieve a certain level of statistical power, uh, we can, b and based on the assumed kind of true population parameter, uh, we can then uh, make a judgment as to what the required sample size is in order to uh, conduct our analysis. All right, so much for this overview of uh, power analysis. In the next video, I'm going to now talk about hypothesis testing in the context of regression and how to introduce uncertainty in our regression uh, framework.